Well, tubers, I want to shoot an intro to this video. I want to redo it. Uh, this video was supposed to be about liquid cooling my power inverter. Uh, it turned into one of those things where a screw up turned into a failure and turned into another failure, and it was a really kind of crazy cascading effect of of, uh, of different failures that turned into a, a mild disaster. So we were supposed to be in Colorado a week ago. Uh, we are still here, uh, and I'd like to tell you sort of what went on. So to start off with, I'm going to pick up a few clips of the original version of this video, and I'd like to talk about the inverter. I had had trouble with this thing. Uh, I, I take that back. I hadn't had any trouble at all with it, but uh, it produces a lot of heat. It's not extremely efficient by design, uh, being a low-frequency inverter. Um, and it dumped a lot of heat back in the cabinet. And I had trouble controlling that heat. And what I wanted to basically do, what I have done, uh, we're, like I said, I'm going to cut to that and take a few clips of it, is I built a water cooling system for this power inverter to move all the heat outside. What I'm doing here is working on my power inverter. So I went over this uh, electrical system a bunch and uh, I don't want to get more into it again but the highlights are that I've got a really large battery bank uh, 24 volt battery bank and a big 6,000 watt 24 volt uh, power inverter and I can run all three air conditioners off of this inverter off DC uh, my generator has got a 270 amp 24 volt alternator and the truck engine has got a 100 amp 24 volt alternator and so I can just run the truck engine it'll mostly keep up with about two air conditioners and if my batteries get low, you just crank the generator up, let it charge on the batteries for a while, and then you can shut it back down. This allows you to go into a restaurant or something and run your air conditioners without having to have your generator running. And going down the road, uh, you know, you can charge them back up. Of course, it's got solar on the roof too. This is an Ames low frequency 6,000 watt inverter. I've talked about these before. These inverters are less efficient, but they're more robust. Uh, you've got a, basically a, a set of MOSFETs and some control circuitry here uh, that take 24 volts and turn 24 volt DC. They switch it back and forth and make 24 volt AC, and this is electronics. Uh, and then you simply take a step up transformer and change that uh, 24 volts to, to 120. This is a 120 volt only, it does not make 240. I have absolutely no gripes about this inverter, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off by saying that because it is absolutely a beast. Um, I have had this up around 10,000 watts, and it will it will eat at 10,000 watts and with very little voltage drop for a significant amount of time, like a minute or something. I have had no problems with it getting hot. Uh, with all three air conditioners, it is running at full tilt. Um, 6,000 watts at, at 120 volts is 50 amps and a lot of times it's actually running if it's really hot outside it'll be like 51 53 amps something like that and it will run that indefinitely the big drawback to this is <clears throat> is these fets that are switching at high speeds these are all the, the MOSFETs here these little things uh, when you have such a high current and you're switching really quickly these produce more heat and uh, and the other problem is is you've got this big giant transformer and this transformer builds some heat as well now this is compounded terribly by the fact that all of this stuff including all this other junk is inside this little bitty cabinet i don't remember if i showed this but behind this grill here i put a couple of really high powered big computer fans uh, and there's a wall cavity here that goes down inside this cabinet and i had a whatever you would call this a thing that goes like in your in your attic um, to turn a fan on to circulate air through your attic so I was looking for the guts to that thing to explain but that thing keeps blowing up and I'm sure what the deal is is it needs more of a snap switch like it comes on at 100 degrees goes off at 90 and this thing would sit there and sort of go on and off in quick succession and uh, I'm just going to put, we're going to talk about later, but I'm just going to put a switch in there where I can turn those fans on when I want them to run. Usually when this thing gets ran hard is when we're going down the road and obviously when it's really hot outside. 
Now the problem with my fan system up there, even when it works, you know, it keeps us say plenty cool. It draws a, a whole bunch of air through that cabinet, but all of this heat that this thing generates gets dumped back into the cab up here. So what I've done is I've taken two of these little aluminum heat sink things and I've glued them along with a, uh, these aren't heat sinks, these are water heat exchangers. And I've glued heat sinks on to them onto the, to the core of this transformer. The last thing I'm going to do as far as this, and I don't have it yet, it's still coming, it's, it's ordered from the jungle side, is I'm going to put a radiator right here. Because this is where all the air is discharged out of this, out of this thing. And what I'd like to do is to reabsorb, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to cool this any better. I'm just trying to absorb the heat uh, and not have it be dumped into the air. Anyway, with having a radiator right here, I'm hoping I can absorb as much of that heat as possible. And then I'm gonna have to, you know, with this coolant pump, we're gonna run the lines down. Uh, the fender well is right there. We can run them down in the fender well and mount some kind of radiator or big giant heat sink outside. So getting back to the cascading events that kind of led up to a small disaster in here, um, I got the inverter put back in the cabinet after I had the water cooling system all hooked up and uh, I was ready to give it, well I was going to give it a hard workout. I wanted to see how well the cooling system performed. I reached up there and hit the uh, start button on the generator and uh, the generator ran for about one second or maybe two seconds and the PLC that controls the logic on the generator and some other things blew up like it actually went up and a smoke ball it blew the capacitors up in it of course once it blew up the generator immediately shut down because it's what you know has to send power to the to the uh, pneumatic kill system and stuff on the generator and i was like what has happened you know i mean hit the button crank it up it just smoke comes rolling out of the cabinet and the generator shuts down and so the generator has got a, two small sets of wires that come up to the battery bank and they're actually what sense the voltage at the battery bank. That's the only thing they do. They don't carry any current. Uh, they're just the, the voltage sensing sensor wires, if you would. And so when I had hooked this inverter up, there's a, uh, a set of fuses in this battery compartment down here that I disconnected. For obvious reasons, I didn't want to short something out and blow something up. And when I hit the start button on the generator, it starts off the truck engine batteries. It doesn't use these batteries. Um, it actually was sensing voltage from the batteries, but it was trying to charge them back through this big cable that comes up here that carries all the power. And so it was, you know, full bore, pouring all the coals it had to that alternator, trying to get the voltage up on the battery bank, but it didn't understand that it wasn't connected to the battery bank. And so what happened was it caused the voltage on my little PLC and this, uh, this inverter to go uncontrolled. It went to, you know, whatever, I don't know. The thing had uh, 20, uh, and I had 35 volt caps in it. So, you know, it got above that because it blew the caps up in that little PLC. I realized what had happened. I hooked the uh, fuses back up on the batteries. Um, I actually had another PLC that I had ordered when I, I bought two of them as a spare. Uh, I just put the program on it, plugged it in, cranked it up. Everything seemed to work. I didn't think there was any problem. I ran the inverter for several hours. In fact, we'll jump back to that cliff right here. So I got most of this contraption rigged up. <clears throat> I'm not quite done with it, but it's been running all day and I want to show it to you. Uh, it's been running for several hours. It's completely heat soaked. I, this is going to mount up underneath here, but I don't have enough of this, of this tubing. I had to order some more, but there is a bunch of heat coming out of this thing. I think that I might need to step up my radiator size but that's easy to do and i can do that later on in fact they made these in three and four uh fan sizes i can get one that's just quite a bit longer it's pretty warm in here you know maybe like 110 degrees or something i mean it feels hot but it's just not all that warm especially down here down low uh it's doing a really good job of absorbing this heat and dumping it outside you can see over there in the corner is a little water cooler i basically hot glued that um little radiator on the back of that inverter uh, where the output of the air is. There's good, still good airflow through it uh, and that absorbs a lot of the heat. The air coming out of that now, out of that radiator, is not that hot and the, um, 
you know, before it was really hot. It was probably, you know, 150 degrees or something. And now it's about 100. I wanted to show you real quick. I actually ran copper lines. I got to get some silicone or something and fill that hole up. Use it as a strain relief too. Uh, but I ran the copper lines down and then that thing is mounted. Mounted right there. I think that'll work great. And the, you know, the cooling system seemed to work good. Uh, it had been actually probably about three hours this thing ran. And I thought, you know, I was initially scared that I hadn't hurt this thing. And it seemed like it had survived. And so we were, you know, thrashing, trying to get ready to go. I think it was might have been actually the next morning that we left. Uh, we took off down the road. We got about 45 minutes down the road and the power goes out. This truck doesn't have air conditioning. If you don't have electricity, you're screwed. This thing's black. So my redundancy to this um, complex DC system is that I've got a 24 kilowatt generator head on my generator. And you simply hit the button, it goes up to 1800 RPMs to gen mode. There's some uh, voltage sensing relays and some contactors that kick in and it kicks everything over to generator. So we pulled over on the side of the road. I wanted to look, uh, make sure there wasn't you know, anything blown up. I tried to turn the power inverter on a few times. It just immediately would say overload. So I hit the gen button, the generator come up to speed, everything lit up. And uh, I made a decision right then that we were going to go back home because even though I had power, you don't want to have to, um, well, you don't want to have to run that big loud generator full tilt, you know, at three in the morning if you just want to get up and have enough water to wash your hands or something. Everything in this coach is 120. Well, anyway, we head back home and I start smelling something that kind of smells like burnt electrical. But I was already mad. I didn't care. We just headed on home. Um, an unrelated issue is about 15 minutes later, the generator shut itself down. And at the time, I didn't know why. Uh, we just drove home with no power. When I got home and started up, I realized that it had actually overheated. Um, and that's sort of a problem that needs to be addressed. Uh, I really don't have enough cooling on it to run the generator hard in, in, you know, in recharge mode. It works great. Uh, but anyway, it had shut itself down on high water temperature. Not a big deal. I actually found out after I got to jacking with it that it uh, it kind of had some dirt built up on the radiator. I think it just needs cleaned out. But anyway, we get home. I uh, take and plug this thing in, plug the RV in to the shore power here in my house. And it like goes, arcs, arcs through the plug, trips a 60 amp breaker that's in the shop. And I'm like, what in the world has just happened? There is a voltage regulator inside that generator. What did I do with it? Right here. And this thing is what controls the voltage output via the, the field current in the actual generator head. And what had happened, you know, I hadn't ran this thing in gen mode, I think really since we used it. It just uses it, you know, it uses the alternator part of it. And uh, what had happened is this thing had went bad probably at the about the time this thing got hot and shut down. I don't know exactly what happened first. And this thing sent uncontrolled high AC voltage throughout everything in this coach. And so when we got home, um, after I had, I, I, I basically, it's got a breaker box on the generator back there. And I opened the breaker, started the generator back up, and this it ran about 400 volts across the windings of that generator. You know, it was sending 400 volts through the, through the coach. And it had actually arced across two contacts in this contactor down there and had shorted or burnt the contacts together so that when I plugged the, um, the cord into the side of the shop, it was, it was back feeding back through to the generator, and that's what blew that. Anyway, I took the contactor part and just knocked the contacts loose in it, plugged it in, got power back in here, and then I realized that it had basically blown up everything. Um, it had blown up the, the controller for the air conditioners. None of the air conditioners were run. There was one light bulb, this one right above us here, there was one light bulb that would burn in the whole coach. It blew up every single light bulb, and it's not just a screwing light bulb, it's a these expensive LED lights with a ballast. Of course, it blew the ballast up. Um, luckily, the 
um, most most I guess all actually of the electromechanical stuff the relays and that kind of stuff all survived uh, the oven survived the microwave survived the refrigerator survived and the actual motors and the air conditioner survived but it blew the controllers up to them and so that's the story of my two-hour vacation <laughs> Basically, everything got blew up. Now, I fixed the generator. I bought another voltage regulator, swapped it out. That was not a big a big fix. It just caused most of the problem. But it's just kind of amazing that me, this all started and all stemmed from me not hooking those batteries up. Because if I had done that, the, the power inverter wouldn't have blew up. And if the power inverter didn't blow up, I wouldn't have kicked it to gen mode. And if I wouldn't have kicked it to gen mode, everything else would have exploded. Anyway. Story of my life. I'm sure y'all are sick of hearing me talk. So I really don't know what actually happened to this thing. I tore it down and it had a FET blew up right here. And I bought another one and changed it out. And this, uh, the MOSFET part of this system works. Of course, the transformer is fine. Um, I can, I actually had all this apart and out and I could, you know, control the, the MOSFETs to, you know, make either this or this positive, negative. You can switch them around. All that worked. Uh, but when you hook the, uh, put this all together and turn it on, it just says fault instantly. It beeps. And I think that it might have blown up some of the control circuitry, and that's actually what blew the MOSFET up. Not the, the MOSFET might have been a symptom, not the, uh, not the actual problem. I don't see anything wrong in here. This, uh, you know, this kind of electronics definitely gets over my head, and it's, it's all proprietary, uh, you know, controllers and, and uh, integrated circuits and chips and whatnot. So in lieu of what has happened, I've decided I want a redundancy on my redundancy, on my redundancy. And so what I'm gonna do is I bought this other cheap, this thing was a hundred bucks, 800 watt, 24 volt power inverter. And I'm going to also mount this in that cabinet. And this will, if nothing else, it'll give me a couple of a couple of plugs. If I got to get up underneath there, open the cabinet, hit the power button, and plug a cord into it. Uh, if my generator blows up and the big inverter blows up, if nothing else, uh, I can run this off the truck engine. You know, I can have have some power somewhere somehow. At least I can run a couple of fans and you know run a cord back there and plug in my water pump or whatnot and have water. You know, the very the very basics. I've decided I'm not going to take this apart for one it's under warranty I think what I'm gonna do which may work better anyway is I'm gonna get along one of these like what we installed outside and I think I'm just going to mount it right here it's right across here and put a couple of fans that draw air up and so all this heat this that's this thing blows out of it I could just suck through that and I'm not actually going to be Well, we made it, <laughs> finally. I kind of lost where we are at in this video, but I gotta close it and I'm gonna try to get it edited and uh, get it out for y'all Friday. But we made it up here. Um, the Q&A video, I'm gonna get on that as soon as we get back. Um, I just hadn't got there yet. You know, probably don't expect a lot from me in the real near future because while well, I'm on vacation, and uh, moreover, I haven't really started any videos and it takes me a couple of weeks time they happen and get edited and uploaded and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, but uh, may shoot some stuff up here, may kind of a blogger trip, may put that out next week. That'd probably be a good one. Uh, if we get anything neat, might just throw up some kind of unedited videos of it. Uh, I got a little bit of uh, footage coming over uh, Raton Pass and a few things. But anyway, um, appreciate you watching. Uh, thanks for all the questions in the previous video. I'll get to those. That's going to be a fun one. But it's not there yet. Um, y'all uh, y'all have a good one. We're going to sit around here and not do anything. And we will uh, catch y'all in a week or two.